gamers we've got a nice long one for you today for tuning in we've got a new version of tron modern horizons e-tron eldrazi tron versus the attempts to try out the birthing ritual yawgmoth a lot of people are still on the traditional yawgmoth side of things and you know, I wanted to test out the birthing ritual side of things and, and see how it goes here. So I've uh, been doing some awesome videos coming out for everybody to be able to watch. If you guys have not, of course, we've been posting up and showing off some of our cube that we have. Uh, we'll be doing some more of that gameplay stuff coming out on Thursdays. We also have some no ban list content that we uh, have been putting together and recording at our LGS for this kind of month of no ban list event. So there's going to be kind of a sprinkling of both, hey, current meta games. Also, we're going to be seeing some banned cards start to show up in some content, uh, as well as some Vintage Cube or Nanman's Nerd Corner Cube content that we'll be seeing. So... If you're not familiar with the new updated Tron list, we did, of course, have a video that talked about the meta and why it's different and what's happening with it, uh, as well as a couple shorts. So you guys can check all that stuff out uh, if you haven't already. But really, it just it's pivoted. It is no longer the let's play our kind of uh, spheres and stars and cycle for mana and be able to go into things. We're now kind of more of a um, hate deck with... Cards like Trinisphere, Chalice of the Voids, and things like that. But here's one of our newest additions, the Kozilex Command. It is, of course, a, a Kindred Instant. So it used to be known as Tribal Instant, like, but now we're, that, of course, has been changed to um, our Kindred type. So if, if you're playing Goyfs, that adds to the Goyf count of types of cards within the graveyard. But this is, of course, great modes. We're going to be doing some scrying. Then we're going to be able to draw a card, and then we made five Eldrazi spawns off of it. So it's a big setup here. Uh, you, of course, can do it on instant speed, so you could do it at your opponent's turn. But setting it up on this turn here allows, especially if you're doing a big dump, it gives you access to, of course, five more mana that you could be able to use. Like maybe you find the one ring or something like that that you could be able to use. Looks like there's a Karn in that pile. I also see... Uh, all is dust. So you can really set up the next couple of turns and really plan things out. So, uh, you know, the Tron list is a toolbox deck. It's a toolbox list that relies on Karn to be able to find artifacts from your sideboard and really be able to respond and react to what your opponent's doing or proactively shut down what your opponent is doing based on the cards that you pull from your sideboard. So lots of options uh, available to you with this kind of style of things where the Yawgmoth list is a toolbox deck, but it's a creature toolbox deck. So what we mean when we're talking about this is there's a lot of different singleton or you know, two of three of cards that we're going to be finding to help us out in different situations here. So let's see. Ooh, dismember. You know what they say about bolt the bird? No, it's just going to make an orcish bowmasters in response. Shoot for one. So, Surveil Lands are kind of here to stay in Modern. We're starting to see them utilize pretty much every list. Some are running one of, some are two, depending on what colors you are. Your two color list, you might be seeing, like, multiple of them in there being like, I'm going to run two, because it makes sense. Also, Fetch Lands, very cheap right now. Modern Horizons 3 reprinted some of our Fetch Lands. Some of the Fetch Lands are only, like, $9, $10 and are cheaper than some versions of their Surveil Lands. Especially like the extended art versions and, and stuff like that. So if you have not picked up the, uh, of course, fetch lands, pick those up. They're great for modern. But here we see the Fulminator Mage coming out. There is one in the main board list that you could be able to use. I picked Tower uh, in this match. I don't, you know, there's always that debate about what do which Tron land do you blow up and why. But look, there's there's the Tower. Of course, never didn't have it kind of thing so i don't i don't know i i definitely in in later games pivot to what i target and don't target 
the tower and that might just be that kind of like you know my brain goes oh i picked tower in game one and he had the tower so now let's pick a different one i i don't know if you guys have ever done that where you're playing against tron and and blow up one of the tron lands and then they immediately replay the exact same one so you're like well i'm never going to pick that one to blow up for the rest of this match i, I don't know so in the tank a little bit, essentially 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 mana available this turn. So could be able to set up here. The one ring is one of the options. So that could be like just, hey, let's play the one ring. Yeah, it looks like that is going to be our choice. Those are all some cards. Um, you know, it will trigger the Orcish Bowmasters. We cannot shoot our opponent with it we would have to shoot one of those uh eldrazi spawn which you know they blow up it doesn't end up making the orc army bigger because the to target is no longer there when the uh trigger resolves so there's one floating so still you know seven mana available this turn draw the card and all is dust that's the other thing too is like if you're playing a deck that's full of colored uh, permanents, like the Birthing Yawgmoth deck, or just Yawgmoth in general, you kind of are left in the spot of All is Dust is a very powerful card. Now, the Yawgmoth list with the Birthing Ritual is not running some of the same pieces that the traditional Yawgmoth list is running. Like Agatha's Soul Cauldron, not in the list. But here we go. We've got our birthing ritual popping out here, and of course we had to go with the Animorph style art. Love it. Uh, but the way that this is works is we don't have to sacrifice a creature if we don't want to. End step, we look at the top seven cards, then we can decide whether we want to sacrifice something and put it on there. Whatever we sacrifice has to be at least one more then or whatever we get has to be at least one more or less than what we sacrifice so if i want to get a three drop i have to sacrifice at least a two drop i'm sacrificing a zero and i'm getting a young wolf here puts in a random order the one nice thing about the birthing yawgmoth deck compared to the traditional yawgmoth list is you just see so many cards in your deck The only downside is like, yeah, Agatha's Soul Cauldron is really good. I currently have a lot of the, the traditional pieces in my sideboard, along with just like hate cards for this list. Like I've got the Agatha Soul Cauldrons and things like that, but it's it's a debate about what I want to go for. Yes, there are four Court of Callings uh, in, in the list, as well as the uh, Birthing Rituals there. There's less Grist. Uh, and you kind of have to spread out your numbers. You notice you'll see cards that are in the list com that aren't normally in the traditional Yawgmoth. Things uh, like the Fulminator Mage and stuff like that. Because you want to curve your way out. Right? Four is the top end of the deck. So you need to be able to hit those ones, the twos, the threes. So there are a couple of three drops in there. And there's the All is Dust. We did get to see, of course, the new... Uh, Eldrazi land get added in here for Tron. One of the main reasons that Tron has gone pure colorless is, is with power cards like that. So we're sacrificing all the permanents there, but uh, you know, utilizing Ugin's Labyrinth to help get more mana. We pitched another All is Dust underneath of it. So that's kind of giving at least information and put on the radar to know, okay, we are aware that if we overcommit to the board, we will end up losing everything again. So we have to be careful about this. Oh, this is also a tough game, too, for the game one with the birthing Yawgmoth having to mull to five. There's another young wolf. Uh, so 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 mana this turn. Lots of mana to work with. Yeah. 
Another new addition, Devour of Destiny, uh, is in here. It's got its kind of pre-game effect, essentially. Uh, reveal this in your opening hand, beginning of your first upkeep. You get to look at your top four, pick one of it, put it back on top, exile the other one. So, like, it's a great setup card for you if you're like, oh, I really could use my third Tron land here. I wonder if it's in my top four. Let's take a look. If it's in your opening hand, you get to do that. Otherwise, if you cast it, you get to be able to just exile a permanent that's one or more colors, which, you know, birthing of the Yawgmoth list pretty much runs everything in there like that. The other side of it is Devour of Destiny can get Pitch to Ugin's Labyrinth to help get you additional mana. But here's Karn the Great Creator. The reason this is a toolbox deck is because of this card right here. It also shuts down activated abilities there. So it works kind of double duty there as a nice little hate card uh, while you also look through your sideboard for tools. And oftentimes we'll see sideboard lists that are 15 unique cards. Sometimes that changes. Sometimes players will be like, oh, I want two of these or three of these and then, you know, 12 unique cards and stuff. Uh, this list that we're running here for the Tron list is one of the sideboard cards or sideboard oriented around the Pro Tour. So you, of course, uh, will see a lot of consistency among decks sideboards for Tron, but it is another one that's like, oh, you might have adjusted it slightly for the Pro Tour, so you might want to adjust specifically for your store's meta. And here's our Prosperous Innkeeper. Again, we talked about adjusting the list. This is not a traditional card in the regular Yawgmoth, but having additional two drops, making treasure, gaining life, it it's perfectly fine as a card as like a one of within the birthing list doesn't help us here because Karn of course shuts down that treasure draw some more cards get some more information let's make sure we're making the correct choices here we Definitely, if we're talking about that advantage meter, you look at this board state, the Tron player is driving the bus. They basically have the game locked up here. Um, the other downside to running the birthing ritual, yes, you get to look through your deck and see so many cards. It becomes even more difficult to find the pieces that you need to combo off with yog moth and young wolf and and things along those lines it's still possible but it is a little bit harder to do now agatha soul cauldron does help make that happen when things get removed and destroyed and stuff like that but not really an option uh in this case with no uh agatha soul cauldron main board maybe i'll do some adjustments to the list too but it's hard to you know you want to have so many creatures in the list right you 28 to 30 creatures in a list there so all right so now we get a glimpse at the sideboard so you can see a little bit of the kind of redundancy within the list two of here three of there debating about the walking ballista but changes yeah liquid metal coating here we're we're not under the gun we're not threatened right here Liquid Metal Coating works extremely well when you have Karn, the Great Creator, because, you know, activated abilities of artifacts, your opponent control can't be activated, so you can be able to pick lands and say, hey, that's a land, you can't use that. Uh, the other option is you can start upticking Karn and be like, hmm, you can't be able to use that because that just dies. So here's another addition. We talked about unique cards for the Birthing Ritual. This is one of them, Honest Rustine. Uh, this thing... I was very impressed with what this did. I might adjust my numbers. I currently have a one of in the list and might actually run two of. Uh, ETBs, you know, you get to sit there and return a creature from your graveyard. Creatures cost one less. I just found it very, very beneficial, like, especially for that kind of comeback. All right, we've gone a little bit longer. How can I be able to close out the game? What can I do here? And this is one of those, like, this might be able to 
you know, really put in the work that I'm looking for with this deck. So might might run a two of in my list. Again, you have to be careful about numbers when doing the birthing ritual version compared to the traditional one where you can be like, oh, I can just run four of these, three of these. Like you need to consider the converted mana cost of the creatures in your list when you're building a birthing Yawgmoth list. All right, here's our liquid metal coating. We can start turning things into artifacts. So we'll float a uh, black mana. Now, your opponents are activating things. If they have mana floating, if you change phases, that mana will disappear. So that's what we go. Okay, move to combat. Right? He really wants to just deplete that mana. And by doing that, we miss out on activating Karn there. Uh, it doesn't really make much of a difference, <laughs> right? But it would, is that little bit of note here of, oh, it's okay. What are they going to do with the one mana? We know that they have or Orcish Bowmasters. They brought it back from the graveyard. It's okay to be able to let them have that mana so I can at least keep my Karn alive or things like that and, you know, do, do these things to kind of still get value out of all the stuff, but... I mean, it's a little bit harder because you want to use the Karn's uptick ability once Liquid Metal's out to start blowing up land. So it, it all kind of evens out, right? All right, in the tank, kind of, you know, trying to navigate through this and say, look and try to figure out, okay, do we just start jamming hate cards here? Do we set up more? And it looks like we're going for the more setup here. Karn, great creators here. Now we'll start blowing up lands. Liquid Metal Coating will turn that Overgrown Tomb into an artifact. Then we'll use Karn's ability. Until your next turn, up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness, each equal to its converted mana cost. Lands, of course, have zero converted mana cost, so they immediately become a zero-zero creature and die. Very cool little synergy, that, and one of the reasons why players will run Liquid Metal Coating, as well as just the double duty of shutting off things that your opponent can do like if you're still toolboxing and looking for more tools you don't have to uptick karn you can just be like on your upkeep i'm going to activate this liquid metal coating to make sure that land of yours cannot be activated this turn all right here's the other thing we're we finally got up to three creatures can't really push in against the six six without losing something and we're staring down Trinisphere, all is dust. Anything that costs less than three mana costs three mana now, which is a lot of things in the list. Uh, bring back all is dust. Attempt to cast all is dust. Going to be responding and casting Court of Calling for three. Cannot use the uh, treasure that we've got there because of Karn, so it wouldn't be for four. So we're looking for a three drop here. Uh, really, there's one in the list that can help us, but it doesn't. Like At this point, we're, we know that our lands are going to continue to be blown up, so it's like, what can we do? Let's try to find another way to close out the game, maybe. No dr uh, gaining, but draining for two. Everything will die. Um, all is dust shall resolve. Undying trigger will go on the stack. Boom. Comes back. Drains for two more, bringing the Tron player down to two life. So very close now for a mold of five, trying to piece something together. And one of the reasons why I love toolbox decks, because there's such a puzzle and how you're navigating it and trying to figure things out. But there's the Yawgmoth, uh, or sorry, the Urborg popping for liquid metal coating and Karn. You know, you're not sure maybe how many of Geralt's methods are in the list. And if, if there are more than one, you don't want your opponent to top deck it and just win. So, 
getting rid of the access to that not gonna happen and then you hear me yelling about trinosphere i try to be like hey here's a delighted half leg so i got another blocker and it goes you cannot because of trinosphere it costs three mana so we are essentially locked out of the game here just trying to see a few more cards of our opponent getting a few more information maybe seeing okay our are there other things that you might play that I'm just not used to in your list? Let's see, you know, you, you've got a, a clock with the, at least sending the 6-6 the six, six across. You have a, a blocker with the 1-1, one, one, or the 0-1, oh, sorry. The Eldrazi spawn. There's the map coming up. Yeah, there's the big Kozilix command. Yeah, so you have you have options here. At this point, you could dump mana into it and just exile the creature. Uh, exile target creature with mana value X or less. Really, you could just get away with, all right, I'm just going to make a bunch of mana and scry a bunch and really just kind of... I'm, I'm in a winning position. I'm just in that kind of win more mode now where I'm going to dig and look and find something to just kind of continue continue to set up for the win. Yeah, the Disruptor Flute uh, is a very powerful new tech. We're seeing it start to pop up in a lot of sideboards. You know... It, it's very good. Uh, there are two main board in this Tron list. Some lists don't run any main board. They run Chalice. This list is is kind of more targeted and not and less of the just kind of eh, blanket removal stuff. But here we go. We'll find another, of course, Devour of Destiny. And that's going to cause the scoop up. We'll go to game two. All right, so Yogmoth player on the play, fighting through the Trinisphere, very difficult. Fighting through all his dust, very difficult. So those are kind of the cards that we have to be the most worried about if we are playing the Yogmoth versus the Tron matchup, and try to see what we can do here. This list, you know, we there's a chance that it could be running Chalice. It's not, but we have to kind of be on our radar that, uh, you know, a lot of Tron's lists run Chalice, whether they're main board or sideboard, they get access to it, which could mess with us a little bit. But starting things out with another, of course, Mana Dork, Delighted Halfling popping up to help just kind of ramp things out for the next stage. Tron, of course, doesn't necessarily have to adjust too much going into game two the way things are now there might be a couple of cards that you're like man maybe maybe i want this but for the most part you're still so toolboxy that you don't have to necessarily you know take out too many pieces of your your list you can and you can easily do that and not have to worry so much about relying on karn and doing it that way but we'll see going into here looks like Surveillin, put a bowmaster into the graveyard there. And a haywire might. So very nice sideboard card. I think there's one of main board, uh, but gives us kind of that flexibility. You know, hey, one ring, we can get rid of the one ring with it. If you're playing Urza Saga, we can get rid of Urza Saga with it, right? Like, there's some annoying things that our opponent could do that Haywire might works out very well. All right. Mine and Power Plant missing the tower to have natural Tron like we fought in game one. That's the other thing is you don't have the same setup like you did in traditional Tron, right? You're not sitting here and cycling and digging using ancient stirrings, sylvan scryings, things like that. You still have the map, but it's a lot more of just, well, just kind of 
slowly get there and rely on our hate cards to kind of carry us into the natural Tron draws, as at least the best we can. Double delighted halfling, haywire here. I mean, it's still going to be painful if we get hit with an all is dust. Not as bad as if we had kind of other threats, but just two mana dorks and a haywire might. All right, there's the eye or I, the uh, Ugin's Labyrinth. We're going to be putting and imprinting that all is dust on there giving us access to four mana on turn three allowing us to have access to Karn so we can go start looking for a tool to help us get through this predicament here yeah so there is a chalice there is the uh, bridge there's you know Levelers, there's a couple of, I mean, Brain in the Jars, is, or Brain in the Jar, the Stone Brain is pretty good for just kind of shutting down what decks are trying to do. You go, oh, if this card is what your deck relies on, let's just kind of shut that down. Here was the question of, do we have two surveil lands? And yes, we started running two in our Yawgmoth list and liking it quite a bit. I don't know if anybody else was in that same mindset of going, I don't know how good these surveil lands are going to be. I was hesitant at first. Like, yeah, you know, these very specific decks are probably going to run them. They'll like them, but I don't think they're going to be for every deck. And now it's like every deck's like, hey, do you have your surveil land? You need at least one in here. It's just value. Like, helps you to set up, confirm what you're going to be drawing, plan ahead. Like, right there, threw an endurance into the graveyard because we're really looking for something else. I mean, endurance is probably nice if we're fighting through so many all is dust, but. All right, combat time. Hey, Fulminator, doing work. I'm probably going to add more into my sideboard it, in the off chance of running into Tron, but also a lot of people are greedy with their mana bases, so I'm, I'm happy with it. Blowing up the mine. And remember, so it was like the debate there of do we go for the Ugin's Labyrinth or do we go just and try to strip it off Tron? Tron, in that case, is the answer. You don't want your opponent to sit there and be able to have access to just like, oh, I blew up this this two mana, but now I have access to seven mana, right? So you, know, you want to try to disrupt that as much as possible. But here's the Stone Brain. Play, activate. Yogma Thran Physician is called. Another Bowmaster and a Rustine hanging out in hand. 
Nah, <laughs> the Tron player's joking is like, you know, this is just not a Yawgmoth deck, and you just you got me because we didn't see any Yawgmoths in game one. So it's like he he could not confirm or deny. He's like, this is just seems like a weird birthing ritual deck. I don't know. I don't know. And now now we get to see a little bit. Oh, the next card was Sheldred. And, of course, all those cards are exiled, so we no longer get access to Yawgmoth. We just have to kind of win through traditional combat methods there. None in hand, so we don't draw any cards. But if there were cards in hand, we would end up drawing cards for the ones replaced. So mathing it out, access to five mana... Might be safe to try to keep at least one green available for our might, but bring back Fulminator Mage. If we have a land drop, we could play the Fulminator Mage and keep our opponent in check. It looks like no. Not the case, and also being able to keep access to the green is probably safe in case some annoying artifact comes out. Eldrazi Temple, so could get access to two, four, five, six mana if they're playing an Eldrazi spell. There's nothing in there other than Kozlux Command that would be able to dump that six mana in. Um, you know, Devour of Destiny costs seven. All is dust costs seven. So you're you don't have to, you don't really get the access to things. So there's the Kozilek's command. So we're going to be scrying and making some Eldrazi spawns here. Scry three, draw a card. Uh, so we're going to respond to the cast and make a Bowmaster shoot for one. There are two Bowmasters. So with the draw, there'll be two Bowmaster triggers. So here's the question. Do you go for face, make the army bigger, or do you shoot Eldrazi spawns and clear more of a path to push for damage? We opt to go for the shooting of the Eldrazi spawns. I don't... I don't know if that's the right play. I feel like it... It. My concern is the all is dust coming up soon. Okay. Dismember. We'll get rid of the Rustine. We could exile the land or the uh, expedition map here that is an option but there's one line that exists trying to help keep our opponent in check land wise i don't think that is the way to go because we have access to our fulminator mage again i feel like we could just blow up another one of the lands and be okay Yeah, so we're pushing here for five total damage. If we had done it the other way, the orc army would be at four power, immediately get chumped and blocked. Our opponent still would have two Eldrazi spawns to use, which would allow them to activate the map right away. But we're going to use our Yog or our uh, Fulminator Mage to kill off the Ugin's Labyrinth. Helping, hoping to strip away access not only to the all is dust but the additional two mana there, and we'll get the uh, scoop up there. So it's tied up one one here. All right, game three. For 
all the marbles. Let's see. Let's see it. Still very tough. Like, that one worked out well. We got to be the one disrupting and keeping our opponent off the lands there and really keeping the pressure on. I mean, I, it definitely... Modern Horizons 3 meta definitely feels very much dependent on who is on the play and who is on the draw. I, you know, there are, of course, other matches that it doesn't feel as bad, but a lot of the ones that I've been playing really feel that way of like, oh, I win the games that I go first, I lose the games that I go second in. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. But Tears of Haywire might start things out, cannot interact with this map, so very likely we'll be seeing a nice little turn three Tron. But here's the debate, because we have a power plant, we have a mine in hand. So there's a Karn on there, it gives us access to three mana, because we want to be able to play that Trinisphere on turn two. There we go. There's the Trinisphere. So again, anything that is less than three mana costs three mana, which is really tough for a list that's running so many one mana or less or two mana one manas a lot of things less than three push for damage poke for one All right, there we go. Pop the map. Get access to Tron on next turn. There's the tower. At least we have the might so we can blow up the Trinisphere and try to do stuff next turn. The scary thing is there's that Karn that is likely getting deployed on turn four. All right, rampant time. Wall of Roots. Let's try... Again, you don't want to overcommit and overdeploy stuff, but it's like the the Karn... Old school Karn is, is a problem. So, just kidding. Cheating step. We don't actually want to put a green uh, minus one counter on it. So, there is a little dork. Which, you know, like if our opponent takes a turn to cast all his dust here, it hurts, but it's not the worst. Tron is assembled. All right, there's Tron on turn four. And casting the Karn. So Karn can, of course, be able to strip cards from a player's hand. Also be able to exile permanents. And, of course, restart the game. It's a problem of a Planeswalker. Don't, doesn't see as much play anymore. A lot of lists were running like a one of. Sometimes you'll see two. Uh, I like it. It's really strong. It's really powerful as a threat. Especially if you're in a position like this or ahead, it works out well. There's a pick your poison getting added, exiled with it. Doesn't really matter, but we like to just kind of put the cards underneath so it's kind of very... Uh, all the information is there. Only permanents matter for when the game gets restarted, but still. All 
All right, so how much pressure do you need to put on the Karn before it just imposes too much oppression here? So we're going to do this birthing ritual here to try to help get us set up into kind of the next stages of the game. So remember, beginning of your end step, you get to look at the top seven and decide. So... Here we go. Here is an Orcish Bowmaster. Again, it's like two cards left in hand. You don't want to get to, to be too resistant of developing a board state, even though you know there is all of dust potential. You have to put enough pressure on the Karn to, you know, mess with your opponent and not let them just kind of have this removal for free every single turn if they wanted to. All right, or sorry, every other turn, right? You can be like, all right, I'll plus four it, strip a resource from your hand. Next turn, I'll sit here and minus three and be able to get rid of a uh, one pesky permanent you've got because it, it hits permanents too. So you can be able to get lands. You could be able to get rid of enchantments, artifacts. It doesn't matter. Oh, wait, non-lands, right? No, exile permanent. Yeah, any permanent. Exile target permanent. So it's like it's it's a problem of a thing. So we opt for the Bowmaster swap here to go for the Fulminator Mage. Um, pass turn and response upkeep. Yeah, so passing turn, response on upkeep to blow up a land do we go for the tower again what do you pick do you have a, do you have a land that you always pick when you blow up a tron land i'm i i locked in on mines this game because it worked well for us in game two so we're really focusing on the mine this time Three mana. And let's plus. Get rid of a Hapatra. We're, we're not really set up for the combo side of things here. So it's like, what, what else are we going to be able to do? Try to beat it down. Now, look, 14 is the number you need to restart the game. Sitting here at 12. Will it happen? We don't do anything about it, yes. But here's the other thing. It's like by your opponent being able to just kind of get free turns to just kind of like mess with Karn and pass, it's like they're really just kind of – there's no pressure on them yet. All the pressure is on Karn. So the question is should damage start to get split between, you know, oh, here's the damage here, here's the damage there. Let's let's put a clock on you and Karn. problem is I have a, a 3 a 1-2, and a 1-1. One, one. Us sacrificing Bowmaster for the Fulminator Mage is correct to keep our opponent in check off of their lands because we saw they've got an all his dust in hand. We see that as uh, viewers, but at the time, the goal is to try to keep them off as much as possible. All right, let's take a look. Spin the wheel of Yogg here. Geralf is nice, but we don't have... I guess we could go and get rid of our wall of roots here, but it looks like Bowmaster is the choice here. This also helps set up and keeps our opponent in check if they get a one ring or something like that, or they go for their um, Kozilix, uh what you call it. What's that new? Constellix Command, right? So Bowmaster is the option. The other option, like we said, was we got to see there was um, the Geralt's Messenger there. And having that threat might be better for helping to close the game out. But we have a cord here. When our opponent activates Karn. So we make the decision. 
So counting the mana here, okay, you've got one, two, three, four, five mana, or six mana if you cast if you're trying to cast an Eldrazi spell. All right, that you know, seven mana is the scary part because that's all is dust. So let's try to push as much as we can before then. So the the two four drops here are Yogmoth, Sheldred. We could also go for Draw Messenger or something like that. But this way, if we get Yogmoth, if we find a Young Wolf or top deck a Young Wolf or top deck a Court of Calling again, we're setting ourselves up for a way to dig and and start to essentially combo off. So it's dangerous doing that on our opponent's turn, but we know they can't activate the Karn because they've already activated the Karn. Survey a land. Throwing another land into the graveyard. Push for damage. Right, again, Karn's at 14. So five damage going at Karn. I think this is the, the point where I could split damage a little bit. Here's two to you. Here's three for Karn, right? Now we're going to spin the wheel. And there's one of the wolves. So now we just need one more because you need two undying creatures with Yawgmoth to be able to do the combo essentially where you can start moving and manipulating your counters back and forth and really get set up here. All right, no other land. So we're going to exile Young Wolf with Karn. And we're going to respond. Sacrificing Young Wolf to Yogmoth. And there's a dismember in response. So now it's the question of do we want to do it again? I think not. You could. You could be like, get rid of the Orcish Bowmaster. But again, keeping it because then they still have four mana that they could play the one ring. This kind of helps get us ready for the next stage of things. I. Maybe you can make the argument for the Wall of Roots. We don't need it anymore. You could sack that and, and dig for another card. Oh, the servo. Any guesses what the card's going to be? It's a new one. MH3. Marionette Apprentice. And I'm using a proxy because uh, my our, mine still haven't come in the mail yet. I ordered them a while ago and they still haven't got here. It's a whole thing. Uh, but it's very cool. You'll see this Marionette Apprentice in every version of Yawgmoth right now, whether it's the birthing one or the traditional one. Being able to make additional creatures and having that additional drain effect is very, very nice. So let's see. Spinning the wheel, looking for a tool to kind of help us in this situation. We've been dragging it out a bit. So Servo is going to get popped. We'll get a one drop here drain a life we've got of course our young wolf there so we got all the wolves now we just need a yog and this is where we might need another third a three drop to to hit this i might have to look and see how many three drops we've got we've got birthing or we've got endurance we've got our Additional group. Maybe we should run two endurances. In I'm not sure. I'll have to look and see. Again, I, l I really like 
our Rustine in there. I might run two of those instead. And hey, we've got there. There's that all is dust we've been waiting for. Let's make a green mana for no reason. Uh, so technically losing should be losing four. When another creature or artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. So I, we say five because I'm still getting used to Marinette Apprentice, uh, so it does not count itself. Do some surveillance. Oh yeah, I forgot the all permanent. So birthing ritual gets gone too. This is where uh, the difference with Agatha Soul Cauldron comes in and works much better because Agatha Soul Cauldron, of course, is an artifact. It's colorless. It does not get blown up by all this dust and gives a little bit more flexibility here, where I could start to utilize the Young Wolf. So I might even adjust some Agatha Soul Cauldron. Problem is, we're we're spinning the wheel so much with with birthing ritual that the soul cauldrons often will just get put to the bottom and we won't see them ever. But maybe they're worth it in this matchup. And maybe this is this is one of those that we bring in from the sideboard because we've got we have two in the board right now. Yeah, it's like I don't I think this is still just shift gears. I think I got so tunnel vision right now fighting against Karn. It's like, yeah, we'll do Two more damage to Karn, I guess. I have ten mana, colorless, eleven mana, I'll drop zero. Oh, please go get a forest. Please and then we'll strip the mine again. If you've got any left, you may get a forest, put it onto the battlefield. He's in the channel ability yeah, here. Yeah. Discard it, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land and opponent controls. That player can search their library for a card with a basic land type. So that means you don't have to get a forest. If you have an overgrown tomb, if you have your surveil lands, you can get any of those dual lands that you might want. As long as it's got the basic land subtype within the land, you can get it. At first, I thought it was just a basic. All right, and there's our devourer to just kind of exile this on the cast. Cast effects are so good. Like, that card's crazy. Devour of Destiny. He says, let's exile the filter lad. All right, and the threat is coming. Six damage. Attacking you for one. Half them. So yeah, the, like we, I don't think it m would have made much of a difference in this, depending on where we were, were starting to push damage. Maybe if we pushed it earlier, I mean, somebody go back and like math it out for me. If we were always at least pushing one damage to keep Karn in check and then pushing like two more or something like that, I don't know. It's, it's tricky. It's tricky. Love me the Rustine. Yeah, it's doing so much work. Yeah. 
I don't know if the Fulminator Mage is the correct play here or not, but I feel it's like I feel like it's too late. We're we're just kind of slowly holding back the floodgates. I mean the pro like the I don't know, we're trying to piece something together the best we can, but with Karn just allowed to run rampant this entire game, there there's been very little we can do. There's been so much hate on the Tron side. All is dust. Karn, it's it's very, very challenging matchup to to have to fight through right now. Trinosphere, like there's there's been a lot that we've had to to deal with. Dismembers. There we go. One damage. Whatever if you picked me in, I was gonna pick you I know, that's always right. That's always like I was I was in trouble no matter no, what there. No, that is the right choice. Getting me off Tron. Yeah, keeping you at from it I feel like is help more helpful. Uh pass burn has pass. Hey, there's another one. There's another one. How many? How many was it? Somebody needs to count how many all is dust have been played this game. How many all of dust did we have to fight through? It doesn't matter what we play. Karn can exile it and will still take six. So tough one, tough one to be a Yogmoth player in the current meta. But I really wanted to try out the birthing Yogmoth. I it was so much fun to be able to go through and see all of the cool cards that you got to see every single game. Like you're just spinning the wheel. Let me look at top seven. Let me look at top seven. Let me look at top seven in every single turn. So I, I'm gonna adjust some numbers, probably put a second Rustine in my list. Again, if you wanna see the list, they're up on our Moxfield link. Consider following that, help show some support. It would be awesome. That'd be great, you know, across the board. If you like the content, of course, subscribe over here. But we're gonna continue to put up more stuff for you all to enjoy. But that's gonna do it for us here today guys thanks so much for tuning in and watching check of course these other videos if you like seeing the content there's other video links here subscribe check out our rts channel as well that's over at nanman's nerd corner and youtube.com slash nanman but that's going to do it for us thanks so much for tuning in and watching and i'll see you all next game